Welcome to the first ever user onboarding teardown here at Product Light Institute. My name is Ramley John, and today we'll be breaking down the user onboarding of full story in four main parts. First, we're gonna look at the pre-sign up, second, the sign up flow, third, the first product experience, and fourth, the purchase experience. Before we get started, I just wanna let you know about something we put together, this one-page product-led onboarding checklist. Now you can use this to take stock of your current onboarding experience, or you can use this to run all of your new designs past it before unleashing it to the world. You can get it for free at productled.com forward slash checklist, or write in the comments below checklist, and I'll DM it to you. Let's first find out what Full Story is. Here's Melanie Chrissy. She is the product marketing manager at Full Story, and I got a chance to talk to her to pick her brain about their onboarding experience. This is how she explains Full Story. Full Story is a digital experience platform. Uh, basically, it's a software product that's designed to help product people understand how their customers or users are engaging with their app or their website, whether that's a mobile app or a SaaS application online. The product has evolved a ton over the last couple of years. I think people used to think about Full Story as a session replay tool, something they would use to watch how people interact with their product. But today, the platform includes some things I'd consider like product analytics, it has these really smart machine trained capabilities. It can show you frustration signals or show you exactly which errors are causing your conversions to drop off. So it's a really powerful platform for people who just want to make their products better. Let's first take a look at the homepage of Full Story. Now I can already hear some of you asking, Ramley, why are we starting at the homepage if this is an onboarding teardown? Should you start from the registration form or to the sign up form or the product tours? Well, the success of your new users really start even before they start filling out your registration form. Your homepage, landing page, and other interactions you have with your users really shapes their expectation for three main things. First, what is this product? What is, what is this even? <laughs> Second, how can it help me solve my problem? And third, is it the right fit for me? So in essence, you're planting a seed for the future for the new users and setting the stage for getting them excited about signing up, trying out, and giving their credit card when they become a customer. Now imagine if a user signs up for your product and they really have no idea what your product does. Maybe they're just curious. Maybe their friend told them to do it. How successful can you onboard somebody when they start things off with a misaligned impression of what the value of your product provides? Good luck with that. Today, I'm gonna to go through the above the fold section of Full Story's homepage and the pricing page to focus more on the sign up flow and the first product experience. Let's jump in. The headline here reads, Full Story tells you everything you need to know about your digital experience. The text below is, Deliver exceptional experiences by letting our easy to use intelligent software pinpoint when, where, and how user struggle is affecting your revenue and retention. The headline and the text combined explains clearly that full story software helps companies with two important things they care about, revenue and retention. They do this with their easy to use intelligent software that helps you figure out when, where, and how users struggle with your app. In some sense, this goes along the line of Dan Kennedy's PAS copywriting formula, which has three main parts. First is problem. And here it says, you don't know when, where, and how your users struggle with your app. The agitation. This is affecting your revenue and retention. It really is hitting your top line revenue. And third solution. Check out our easy to use intelligent software to fill in the blank. Now to the right of this, you see an image of a line that goes up and down like a roller coaster. Along that line, there's a young hip millennial looking frustrated at her phone. There's a notification beside her, slow page load. Further along the line that dips sharply upward, someone's on their laptop. There's also a notification beside it, checked, add to cart. Even further along the line, now slightly downward, there's a website with the notification dead click. From what I gather, this represents the emotional customer journey with a brand. I generally like how this image ties really back to Full Story's value, as described in the headline and text description to the left. 
I also like how the photos reinforce that full story is for digital experiences and not just for website experiences. This includes mobile and web. Now this is a perfect example of how the images complement the copy instead of taking away from the message. This is not just some random illustrated image that I see so many startups and website use and copy. However, if you look at the smaller images, they look like random stock photos. I'm not a big fan of stock photos. They make things look inauthentic and may cause your brand to come across as fake. Maybe this is where a little bit of illustration would have been helpful. Maybe just a photo from an iPhone. Taking a look at the customer logos below the buttons, you can see who Full Story is mainly targeting big consumer facing brands such as CarMax, GNC, Hyatt, and HBC. The text above the logo reads, improving billions of experiences that brands like. Now this is the third time that Full Story used the word experience above the fold. They really want to drive home that point. Finally, the primary button's copy is get a demo, which reflects how this is probably more for enterprise looking for a demo before they make a purchase. Now what's fascinating is Full Story hasn't always been focused on getting people on a demo. In fact, as my conversation with Melly Chrissy, she's the product marketing manager at Full Story, she points out that Full Story has been more traditionally a product-led company offering a 14-day trial until recently. That request to demo CTA is super new. Like we really only shipped that in the last two to three weeks here. Oh wow. Um, in terms of making that our primary call to action. So you caught us at kind of like a shift in our business. Um, but you're right. I think, you know, in the past, our primary mode of operating was, hey, if we can just get people in a trial, they're going to understand immediately how magical Full Story is. And that was our primary call to action for a long time. Before I click on the button to see what happens, notice that this button doesn't match the same copy as the button on the navigation bar, which is request a demo. Now, I've gone through the rest of these pages for you, and there's another page which has book a demo. Now, get a demo, book a demo, request a demo. It would be better to have a consistent copy for requesting a demo. It just really makes it easy for folks to tie it all together. Interestingly enough, after you click on get a demo, you end up on the bottom of the homepage to request a demo. On the request a demo section, the headline is take your digital experience to the next level, which connects nicely with the above fold headline and the testimonial right below. In there, Satya Motiani, a product manager from Truecar, describes how Full Story increased their user engagement by 50%. The next part speaks to one of the things that product managers working on new features are looking for. The confidence to know that users are using and deriving value from new features. A great way to tie it back to jobs to be done of product managers. Now the form to the right pops out from the dark background. The form itself is basic enough I like the last optional open-ended question, how can we help you? It's a great way to let prospects tell you the best way that you can help them. There's one final thing above the fold that I want to take a look at before I go to the pricing page. There's a secondary button, watch the video. Now a huge part about the button copy is providing a clear idea of where that will take you, what it'll do. Here, what, what is the video? What is this video about? Oh, and by the way, it's duh video. What, what is duh video? Whatever that means. Anyway, I save you the trouble and watch the two minute video here. And I gotta say, it's really well done and it seems very expensive the way that it's put together. It's an explainer video of how Full Story can help brand increase customer loyalty and revenue. It's filmed from the perspective of a customer of a fictional e commerce store, Teehee Shop, who just wants to buy his soft V neck tee but can't because the website is broken. This is what happens if your brand doesn't use Full Story. The video goes on on how their software could have helped Teehee shop. Final shot is the customer getting the V-neck tee. Finally, the end. This video is excellent. It's story driven, it's well paced. I just wish that the button copy wasn't watch the video, which is so big. What's better could have been watch Full Story in action or watch Full Story help your brand. To save time, I'm going to jump into the pricing page from here. Now, I can tell you this homepage is really well done. From what I've gone through so far, this answered the three questions. First, do I understand what the product does? Yes, it's an easy to use intelligent software that helps show how, where, and when users struggle with your app. Second, do I understand how this product can help the target audience? 
The primary target audience seems to be product teams of consumer brands. Third, has the product positioning itself as the best solution to the problem? We'll find out on the pricing page. Well, let's jump in to the pricing page. The headline of the pricing page reads, know your digital experience, start today. Now, this is a significantly weaker copy than the homepage. Now the pricing page is typically one of the most visited pages of SaaS websites or websites in general. I would have made this more value driven and reinforced what customers really want whether that's to highlight hidden costs of lost revenue or craft digital experiences that wow your customers. This copy right here seems weak and uh, compared to the homepage. Looking at the plan comparison table, Full Story really has gone all in with enterprise. Not only is it the first plan that appears on the pricing table, but they feature it with a box shadow that makes it stand out from the rest of the page. But as you scroll down to the bottom, you're surprised to come across a free plan. Whoa. With all the emphasis on enterprise customers at this moment and the enterprise plan, who would have thought that there would be a free plan? Now, Melanie actually shares how this product like tactic can help more traditional sales organizations. Escalating those leads from the product when they engage with certain milestones to say, hey, someone just completed this really exciting thing in the app. It's probably a really good time to have a conversation those are gonna be much more compelling uh, productive conversations than just like someone downloaded a white paper mm. on our marketing site. Not that there's anything wrong with <laughs> content strategy as well, I think that's important, but you know, there's a really different stage. And so using the product engagements to do uh, qualification is huge. It's also apparent here that the limitations of the free plan, thousand sessions per month, What's not clear here though is the most critical question, how much is it? Are there any other limitations in terms of features? What happens when you go over 1,000 sessions per month limit? Let's scroll down to the plan comparison table below to find out. Looking at this, it seems like there's no difference between the free plan and the paid business plan other than that 1,000 sessions per month limit. Let's scroll down further to the frequently asked questions below. The answer to the last question seems like Full Story deletes any sessions over that 1,000 limit. Now hitting that limit will probably trigger the sales team to reach out to you anyway. No worries, we'll just make sure to stay below this limit. My only concern left that's left to be answered is the price of this business plan. It seems like Full Story is playing a traditional sales game where they hide the plan price behind a demo. Anyway, it's time, let's hit that start free button. Now, after we click on start free, we're brought to this sign up page. In the headline, it reads, start your free trial now. Wait one second. Did we sign up for a free account and not a free trial? I'm confused. Is this a free trial for the business plan? Now, the text below headline doesn't really help with the confusion. You're minutes away from insight. It's fascinating that the value full story is described as insights here. This word has only been used once in the homepage and the pricing page, just once. I counted. This is a real disconnect to the copy from the website where the full story's value is described as helping uncover hidden opportunities to improve your digital experience. Some of you might ask, well, didn't you just come from the homepage family? Why, why are you being so nitpicky? Well, my point here is that this is a critical moment in the user's journey. Every user who has signed up has seen this page. Anytime you can reiterate and emphasize the value of a product, you do it and you do it consistently. Anyway, let's fill out the required fields here. The phone number is optional. <laughs> I'm not gonna fill that in. There ain't no way I'm giving my phone number to strangers on the internet. I don't want any stalkers or crazy giving me a call. <laughs> I kid. Anyway, Melanie provides some really fascinating insights here in my conversation with her. She found that a lot of people that actually do fill out their phone number when they added this field, it didn't reduce the conversion rate of the sign-up flow at all. The phone number field in particular, I remember just wringing my hands over it, right? Because like I'm coming from a product-led mindset. I believe in no friction. I don't give anyone my phone number on the internet. Like Ramley, I wouldn't even give you my phone number. And like, I trust you. We're talking, right? <laughs> um, but I'm like, who would, who would do that? So we ended up making it an optional field. So like, hey, you only give us your phone number if you want us to call you because that's what my sales reps are going to do if you put that phone number field in there. Um, but it's amazing. Like I was super wrong about that. I thought it was going to affect our, I thought it was alienate our customers. I thought the engineers were going to bounce right off the sign up page. More often than not, people give us their, their real phone numbers in that field. And uh, so that was really surprising. That was interesting. But for me, there's no way I'm giving my number. 
Anyway, let's skip that and hit the get started button. Oh no, I have to go to my inbox to activate my email? <laughs> what a bummer. I, I asked Melanie why they make every new user who sign up activate their email here. Definitely thought through what would happen if we got rid of the activation email. I think because full story right now, we, we accept all emails, like it can be a Gmail. We don't, at this moment in time, don't ask you that you have to give your work email. Mm. Um, we get a ton of spam. And so for security reasons, I mean, like literally we see people like, I don't know if it's ad fraud or what's going on, but it's like people are using other people's email addresses to sign up. So mm. that activation is really a like security measure to right. protect those people <laughs> to make sure that like, hey, you're only signing into full story if you gave us your email on purpose. Product led approach is to remove as much friction as possible. But I understand the reasoning here, security and spam. From a user experience perspective, it would have been worthwhile to include those reasons in the copy. The copy as it stands sounds like a cheery person smiling and giving you bad news. It's like a friend letting you know, sorry, your dog just died. All while with a smile on the face. This copy lacks empathy in my opinion. Anyway, let's jump back in. The activation email itself isn't any better. It's the same cold robotic email as the previous page. In my head, I imagine the teacher from Ferris Bueller's day off. The Republican controlled House of Representatives in an effort to alleviate the effects of the, anyone, anyone, the Great Depression. It's the one speaking this in his monotone, sleep-inducing voice. You're almost there. Please verify your email to activate your account. Why couldn't this have come from a human rather than a full story support? Maybe someone from the customer success team. Anyway, this is a big onboarding sin that I see a lot of SaaS company make. Be more human. It really does make a difference. Well, enough about this. Let's click on that activate your account button. Where, where am I? This gradient background came out of nowhere. All the pages that we've visited so far have flat designs with white backgrounds. This radical change got me questioning myself, am I still in full story? The logo at the top says I am, but the shift in design says I'm not. Let's ignore this 80s vibe design here and let's get going. Right below the full story logo, it reads, welcome back. Let's finish creating your account. <laughs> this sounds like an engineer wrote this copy. And I, I can say that joke because I was a full-time software programmer before I got into marketing. And I've definitely put together sign up pages with copies like this before, just, just to get it over with. This is another missed opportunity to reiterate the value of full story. Imagine signing up for full story and forgetting to activate your email a day later or maybe a week later. It could have been a full day since the last time you saw full story's homepage. And if you're anything like me, you probably already forgot what you ate for lunch yesterday, much less full story's value. This page does a few things right though. First, look at the email address. It's already filled in. I am lazy, I admit it. And if I don't have to type it, I won't. Thank you, full story, for saving me my precious seconds by filling that in. And I'm not being sarcastic. This is really great. Second, thank you for leaving a hint for the password. Must contain at least one digit, one lowercase letter, and one uppercase letter. Great. I don't have to guess the limitation of the password. When asking new users for passwords, it's better to state outright your security measures. Imagine how frustrating it can be to enter a password and get rejected. It's like prom all over again. <laughs> Once you enter a password, let's hit that create account. Huh, this is interesting. I expected to go just straight into full storage product or some kind of onboarding flow, but I see before me the terms and condition with human language interpreter. I wonder why full story puts this as the first thing I see before I getting into my account. Maybe it's for the people who sign up from enterprise company who care about small print details like this, especially anything related to data and privacy. But ain't nobody got time for this. I'm going to click that checkbox and indicate that I've read this even though I haven't and click accept. This leads us to a more traditional looking onboarding flow. The design is more consistent with the sign up page with a white background and flat design. The heading of this page reads, welcome, tell us a little bit about you. This will help your teammates recognize you in full story. They provide a reason why they're asking for the information on the page. This copy also emphasizes that Full Story is meant for a team sport and not a solo adventure. What I also like about this is they already pre-populated the first name and last name, which if you recall, I already filled in in the signup page. Anyway, let's fill this out. It's great that this allows you to select more than one responsibility, especially in smaller teams where some folks wear multiple hats. 
Before we click on the setup account, you can see at the top of the page that there are three steps to the onboarding flow. Create account, set up account, and start recording. Progress indicators like this are a great way to keep impatient new users like me motivated to complete this process. It promises a reward or indicates the user how close they are to finishing the onboarding process. Kudos for this. It's something that a lot of other onboarding experience should mimic. Which brings me to the button copy, set up account. This is a nice touch to indicate that this is the next step in the onboarding flow according to the progress indicator above. Kudos on Full Story team for not leaving this as generic like next or let's do it or, or continue. Anyway, let's move on to the next step and click that button. The headline here reads, thanks Rambly, let's set up your account. We'll tune Full Story features for your account with this information. Great copy. It's personalized with my name. It also explains why they're asking for the info below. As a marketer, I know they're asking this so that their sales team can better qualify me. But like anyone, I like my account tuned for my needs. And that's great wording that it's about what they want, the users want versus what you're going to get from them. Also, once again, the fields are pre-populated with the company name that I filled out previously in the signup page. All right, let's fill in the rest of the information. How many people work at my company and what kind of business am I in? And look at this button copy. You are doing so well, full story. Why did you go back to something generic like continue and not start recording, which is the next step in the onboarding flow? For people who are paranoid about making sure everything is correct, there's a previous link below the primary button. It's subtle enough that it doesn't take away attention from the primary call to action. Let's move on and smash that continue button. The headline here reads, great. Now for the fun part, all it takes is a little bit of code to start recording sessions. Do I hint a bit of sarcasm here? <laughs> I love it. The copy here is so human with that added touch of sarcastic undertone. Most marketers I've worked with hate code. And I'm not generalizing, this is from my experience working in the past. I know some marketers love code. <laughs> I also like how they've made it as frictionless as possible by providing three options to set up the code. First is by installing it with Google Tag Manager. Almost all places I've worked at and the companies I've worked with have Google Tag Manager installed on their site. I understand why this is the first option here. There's also a little note in the bottom to enable a pop-up. Great way to anticipate what happens next if a user clicks on the button and nothing happens. For those who have access to their website's code, you can click on the second option. The instructions read, paste your full story snippet into the head of your website. The last option here is always helpful for any app that requires code to be installed. It reads, nice, tidy instructions for your favorite engineer. Another <laughs> excellent copier. For context, most engineers I've worked with find that installing snippets like this are super annoying. They've got other important things to, to do, to build, features to ship, and deadlines to meet. This is why it's best to send a small task like this to your favorite engineer. The button copy here is send your snippet and not just send. I'm glad to know that I'm not just sending a message, but it also includes the full story snippet. The text below this button is a nice added touch. You'll be CC'd on this email. Whenever I send a system generated email like this, I like to CC myself to make sure it actually got sent. This is another excellent example of anticipating objections of the needs of your user. Good job, full story. Great copy here so far. The last thing on the page is continue button. Oh, come on, wait one second. This is the final step of the onboarding flow. What am I continuing to? Am I, is there another step that's hidden here? Because of this, this doesn't feel like the last step of the flow. It doesn't provide any idea where it'll also take me because I, I don't see anything on the progress indicator anymore. Anyway, I'm, let's just find out and click continue. Loading screen shows up, it reads, one more thing, privacy is a priority. Protect the privacy of your users within full story. It goes on that you can exclude sensitive parts of your site easily with full story. They really want to drive home the point that privacy is important to them. I have a feeling that this topic has come up over and over again in the support and sales conversation. And this is a great way to handle objections at the beginning and address any concerns new users might have. Now the button copy reads, continue to full story trial. Below this, there's a text, flip to full story free anytime from settings. Ah. So when I sign up for the free account, I start off in a trial, then I can switch anytime to free. Uh, that would have been good to know at the beginning when I click on start free at the pricing page. Anyway, let's move on to the first product experience. I'm excited. We're finally in the full story app, but wait, what do you see here? A face full of code. 
How exciting. Oh, I get it. Can't really do much without installing that snippet and we can't replay any sessions or see any analytics without the code. But there are so many things that Full Story could have done here to get new users excited about installing this. A welcome message would have been a nice touch which ties back to the human copy from the onboarding flow. Even better, a welcome video from the founder or the team or the customer success team. The video we saw at the beginning of the homepage would have been useful here to get people excited about what they can do after they install Full Story. This would have been also a good time and place to ask for a demo or ask for help to see Full Story in action before they actually get their code installed. This little help icon on the upper right of the screen is so small, it's easy to miss. In any case, I've got access to productled.com code and so I'm just gonna drop it in there to see and continue on. A few moments later. Huh, nothing. No congratulations, nothing. Have I installed the code correctly? I a tool to validate that snippet installation would have been very helpful. For example, I recently installed Google Optimize for uh, a website that I'm working at. There's a useful button to verify that it got installed correctly. Without any way else to know if I've installed the full story snippet correctly, I wonder how long it takes for sessions to appear. Hmm. Let's find out and click on the link above the code snippet. How soon will sessions appear? Convenient. <laughs> This brings me to the full story help page related to this. It says sessions could should appear right away, huh? But there might be a five to 30 minute delay before a session is indexed. This would have been useful to know without having to read the support page. Why don't you just include it at that page? One hour later. After about an hour, I finally got a live session, finally. Right there in the middle is a play button. Let's go check out the first session. In this play session, there's a yellow flickering icon on top of the note and sharing area. Full Story really is calling out how their tool is meant for teams and not just for solo users. We saw this in the onboarding flow. Well, what else do we have to do other than click on that yellow icon? A tooltip appears, share and discuss sessions with your team. Good to know, this once again emphasizes Full Story value for product teams and not just for single product managers. Well, that's it for the first product experience. In terms of taking it to the next step with purchasing the product, Full Story makes it easy, kind of. There are a few places in Full Story that leads you to buy the product. First is if you click on the number of days left on your trial, this brings up this odd slider to the right. It reads, unlock the magic of Full Story. Hmm, magic, that's the first time throughout the site that I've heard that word magic. You can scroll to the right to see the different features of Full Story and how it can help you and your product team. The primary button here is talk to us. This is different from the homepage and other product pages which read book a demo, get a demo, request a demo. I do like talk to us. It comes across as more conversational. If you stumble upon a paid feature like conversations or the data exports tab, you come across a sales page to upgrade. For the conversations page, it reads, understand what's impacting your conversions. And it goes on in the text below to explain how Full Story can help you identify problems in your digital experience that may impact revenue. The call to action here is also talk to us. Now, if you click on this, anywhere on this app, a slider appears on the right. It reads here, let's start a conversation. Much like what we saw in the onboarding flow, every field is already pre-populated. This removes the friction of not knowing what to put in the message here. Maybe just say, hey, but that's great. In summary, overall, I would give the user onboarding experience of Full Story an A minus. There are a few things that really make it stand out from other onboarding experience I've gone through. First, other than the few mishaps with the activation page and the email, the copy from the beginning to the end has been outstanding. It has personality and comes across as conversational and helpful. I particularly love how they added sarcasm on the page for you to install full story snippet. Great. Now for the fun part. They also do an excellent job of reminding users throughout the onboarding of the problem they're solving, UX issues that impact revenue and loyalty, and how the product can help product teams solve that. Second, they pre-populated fields that I've already filled out before. People are generally lazy, or maybe it's just me. I don't like entering things that I've already done before. Imagine your friend asking you for your email address and a few minutes later they ask for the same thing and then another hour they ask again. It can get annoying. If your app asks over and over again the same thing, it feels like that. It will make your users feel something that they've already done before. Third, the progress indicator during the account setup 
helps more users complete the onboarding process. Progress indicators like this are a great way to keep impatient new users like me motivated to complete this process. It promises a reward or indicate new users how close they are to finishing that process. Fourth, they provided steps to install the full story snippet in three ways. This is one of the most significant barriers to getting new users to experience the aha moment for full story. Chances are marketers and product managers have access to Google Tank Manager account. So this is the first option you see, but you can also install the code or send a message to your favorite engineer. Now let's talk about rooms for improvement. First, the button copy throughout the experience has been hit or miss. A huge part of about button copy is providing a clear idea of where it will take you or what it'll do. Big button copy like watch the video or what's the video or continue that doesn't provide a clear picture of what will happen next if you click on it. There isn't a consistent button copy to get a hold of the sales team as well. Is it get a demo? Is it request a demo? Is it book a demo? Is it talk to us? Second, talking about button copy, when I sign up for a free account, I clicked on start free. Then in the onboarding flow, it became start free trial. I was confused if I sign up for a free account, which I thought it was, or did I sign up for a free trial? This confusion might have caused Full Story's recent shift towards enterprise customers, but it can be cleared up quickly with a few wording changes on the pricing page. Third, there's no welcome message as soon as you get to the product. This is a big missed opportunity. Throughout the onboarding experience, Full Story's copy comes across as conversational and very human. They could have amplified this even more with a welcome in-app message or even a welcome video from the founders. Instead, your first product experience of Full Story is a face full of code, which is, according to Full Story, the fun part. <laughs> Fourth, there should be a way to validate Full Story snippet if it's installed correctly. After I installed Full Story on the productlet.com's website, nothing happened, which made me wonder, did I mess up? Did you mess up? I checked the source code. I checked the plugin that I used to set it up. All seems correct. Then I read the support pages that it could take up to 30 minutes for sessions to be indexed. Ah, it wasn't me. It was you, Full Story. But what do you think? Did I miss something that Full Story did really well or something that they did that could have been better? Let me know in the comments below. Love to hear what you think uh, throughout all of this. Well, that's it for the first ever user onboarding teardown from the Product-Led Institute. Once again, this is Rami John. We put together a one-page product-led onboarding checklist for you to use. You can use this to take stock of your current onboarding experience or run all of your other new designs past it before unleashing it to the world. You can get it for free at productled.com forward slash checklist or you can just type checklist in the comments below and I will DM it to you. Second, Wes and I are also doing full audit of your product's user onboarding experience. It's a bit like this, but a little bit more in depth. We'll go through not just your first user experience, but also review your analytics, whether that's Google Analytics, Mixpanel, or whatever analytics tool you use. We'll even dig into your emails, in-app messages, and more. I guarantee you there are bottlenecks in your products onboarding. We'll identify it and break it down for you how you can fix that. If you're interested in getting an onboarding experience audit for your product, go to productled.com forward slash audit. Finally, I just want to let you know that Wes and I do onboarding workshops for select companies. And those training will walk you through battle-tested onboarding framework that will help you create onboarding experience that convert without resorting to short-term salesy tactics. <laughs> Who wants that? Throughout our history working on onboarding experience for companies like Grow.com, Dynacare, OutSystems, and more, we've seen inside more SaaS onboarding experience than anybody else on the planet. If you're interested about this, you can find out more about our onboarding workshops for your company at productled.com forward slash training. Well, that's it for now. Until the next one, this is Ramley John. I will see you in the next user onboarding teardown.